Welcome to the TechSource.tv. Today, we're going to show you on How To Tuesday how to make sure your system's stable using programs like CPU-Z, GPU-Z, Prime95, Furmark, and also using SpeedFan and PC Wizard to monitor your temperatures. So please stick around. This should be very informative. It's All right, so today I'm gonna quick, we're gonna quickly show you uh, some CPU uh, temperature and um, GPU monitoring tools. Now you got to do this before you really stress your CPUs because you got to really know what's going on. So um, these are some first first things you should definitely look at when you get your system up and running. If you just built a computer and um, things like that. So the first thing you should really look into when you get your PC built is uh, what CPU you bought, which you probably already knew. Um, but you want to know if you're gonna be overclocking. You want to know what stepping you're using and what revision it is. Now this this is a huge thing when it comes to overclocking, along with what motherboard you're using. Um, depending on what motherboard you bought, that really determines on your overclock, along with your RAM and how well your RAM overclocks. Um, now, really it comes down to the stepping in the motherboard. That's really the big factor of how well you can overclock. Different batches overclock differently too. So depending on even on the batch of CPU you got, that also determines on how well they overclock as well. So there's a lot of things involved into overclocking a CPU. You have gotta do a lot of reading. You just can't fiddle with it, up some voltages and up some numbers and just hope all works. Um, doing that, you may blow your system up. Now today I'm not gonna show you how to overclock. I'm gonna show you how to do some things and you know how to check if your overclock is stable or your new system that isn't stock as that stock clock is stable. So basically, how do you do it? So basically, um, you load up CPU Z. You can download that. You can uh, Google search to CPU Z. Get the quick latest version, which is 1.58, which is I got now. Um, at the time of the recording, it shows you what socket your system is. It shows you what CPU you're using, your TDP, current clock speed. I'm running at four gigahertz. Uh, multiplier, things like that. So it shows a lot of good information. It's a great way to make sure uh, your system is the way it's running and the way it should be. Next, uh, we got GPU Z. Now this shows you uh, all the information about your graphics card. Uh, when you highlight it over, it actually gives you a little bit of information. CPU Z doesn't do that. Now GPU Z isn't made by the same people. It's made by Tech Power Up. Um, it's still like, I think it's still a beta because it's not even version one. Um, but it's a great program. It works great as well. And actually there's a new version that I should download. Um, now we're gonna move on and we're gonna show you some programs you can use to monitor your temperatures. All right, so here's some good ways to monitor temperatures on your CPU. I got a lot of things open here, so we're gonna get rid of one of the instances of CPUs. But anyways, so here we go. This is how you monitor your temperatures. You can use one of two programs. There's many other programs out there. Um, now I'm just scratching the surface. You know, there's a lot of other ones out there. There's even ones that are vendor specific and things like that. And there's other, there's great ones also for uh, GPUs as well, like uh, MSI Afterburner, which is a great overclocking and monitoring tool for your GPU. And we're gonna talk about more CPU specific. Uh, now, if you're overclocking your CPU and even before you overclock, you wanna make sure your, your voltages and your uh, temperatures are fine. So with speed fan, you can, mount, you can monitor everything. You can monitor CPU load, you can monitor uh, fan RPM, you can monitor voltages, and you can monitor CPU temps. Apparently my SSD is running at 120 degrees I can assure you it is not because I can touch it with my hand if I did touch it at 128 Celsius I would be burning my hand because 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water anyways um, so you here's a PC wizard a little more complex it shows you all the information about your system vendors uh, all the model numbers everything like that there's a lot of different menus you can go through um, now the voltages and fans it's all live up to, up to date and you can go through, it has everything. Now, when you, once you minimize this, it overlays over everything you have. You can change the color of it when it does pop up. It's uh, a lime green, which is annoying. Now, um, it shows you CPU temperature, cores, uh, CPU uh, TDP, core load, and GPU temperature and GPU load, which is great. Now, we're gonna go on, I'm gonna move on and show you guys uh, what programs you use to actually stress test your CPU and GPU. All right, so there's two programs you can use. Well, there's many programs you can use. There's two that I use. Um, I use Prime95 and I use Furmark are my good initial tests for benchmarking. Uh, well, not really benchmarking, but for burn-in tests and stress tests on my GPU and CPU. Now, Furmark does have a, ben a benchmark built into it. I don't really use it, but uh, you could use it if you want. Um, but anyways, with a, uh, sorry. Uh, with Furmark, um, you can uh, do a GPU stress test and OP it's an OpenGL test. It's by 3dgeeks3d.com. Uh, geeks you can download that off their site or just Google it and you'll find it. Um, Furmark's great, you install it. And then after it's got two monitoring tools, um, it's also got more set, lots of settings for full screen, different reses and things like that. So once you run it, it gives you a nice warning, you know, 
you just gotta, you know, do, doing things like this, you gotta really gotta, this is a good way to really measure if your system's stable or not. Cause it says, you know, uh, make sure your cooling's good enough, make sure your power supply is sufficient to fully load everything and yada, yada, yada. Um, so anyways, once the tool is loaded, it shows uh, a nice furry donut. It's moving around and it's, uh, and it's also got this cool little background. And now this actually fully loads your GPU, brings up the fan and shows you your fan speed, fan RPM, the GPU, uh, speed, GPU, memory speed, temperature. It shows you how many frames it's gone, how, many, how long it's been running for. So that's always good because when you are when you are stress testing it, you want to know how long it ran for just in case it did crash. Um, it's going to show you how, how many frames it's running at. Your temperature is down here. It shows maximum temperature, uh, minimum temperature, current temperature, things like that. So that's always good to know. So Furmark's a great tool. It's very easy to use. You just basically click the big button and away it goes and you know if your GPU is uh, stable or not, if it crashes or not. Now, Prime 95 is pretty much just as simple. You don't need to install it. Now, there's a difference. There's a 64-bit and 32-bit versions. So uh, make sure you download the right one for your copy of Windows. Works on, all these programs work on every version of Windows. I just dropped my phone. Anyways, um, so when you load up Prime 95, it's going to look like this. It's going to say blend test or um, all small FFT test or in place large FFTs. Um, basically, the only ones you want to worry about is uh, blend test or large FFTs. A large one, large FFT basically means more heat more power consumption, less RAM is being used. Blend is a great amount of heat it makes. Actually, it still loads your system to 100% and it uses a lot of RAM. And that's really the main one you want to use. Basically, if your system crashes like say now or it crashed now, then you know it's not stable within seconds. I've had this where I've hit the go button and pfft, system died. And now that's, you know, it's not stable. It may be, yeah, running Windows fine and doing, you know, regular things that's not really stressing it. But as soon as it, as soon as it gets fully loaded and completely loaded and as soon as you, and it crashes right away, then you know your system's not stable. Um, now, if it's stable, if it crashes like maybe several, several hours down, down the line, then yeah, it's a little unstable. You probably could use it. You can get away with it. I've had a system that was like that. I had an overclock on an older processor and it did that. Um, but if it doesn't crash, say after 10 hours of usage, even with, even with Furmark, after about 10 hours of usage, it doesn't crash, um, then you know you're good. If you want to know if you have a, C a power supply efficiency, then uh, go ahead and run both. So you just hit go. Now I got Prime95 and Furmark running at the same time, and I got lots of loadage load on my CPU and my GPU. You know, we're running around the GPU around 95, 98%. CPU is running around 100%. So we got lots of load on the system. And now this is really testing if your power supply is good, if your GPU is good, and how well your power supply really works. It's a great way to test everything. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much it in a nutshell on how to test your system and make sure it's stable. You know, there's a couple simple tests. Oh yeah, and to stop Prime 95, it doesn't stop by just closing it. I just almost forgot to mention that. You gotta go to test and you gotta go hit stop. And you're gonna go hit stop all workers and hit okay. And that's how you really stop it. Yeah, just by closing, it's not gonna kill it. Um, also, and you can just hit exit here. And that's how you kill it. And uh, Fairmark will just close that. So anyways, guys, that's Prime95 in a nutshell. That's how you do it. And that's how you stress test your system. And it's pretty simple. And later in another video on down the road, we're gonna show you in a how-to Tuesday on how to overclock an AMD and an Intel system, very basically. Anyways, guys, please remember to rate, rate this video a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, we'll see you next time on the TechSource.tv.